Hello and welcome to the writing session on punctuation. In this session we're going to do all things punctuation. We're going to go over the basics first and then we're going to continue to extend our punctuation until we've covered everything. So let's begin by looking at sentence terminators. We begin with the sentence, Paul was scared. Okay, we uppercase the first letter. In fact, we would do that anyway because this is a this is a proper noun, so Paul would be in uppercase, and then we terminate the sentence with a period. Here we terminate the next sentence with a question mark, and we even put in one of those commas with this is a little uh, sentence intro. But then, what else would you expect from a wanted man? And then finally we say, a calm demeanor? Answering the question. And here we put an exclamation mark to mean we're rather frazzled about the answer. So here in this single paragraph, you're seeing the three terminators for sentences. The period, the question mark if the sentence is a question, and an exclamation mark to add a little emphasis to uh, pretty much this means a think of a sentence that's more or less shouted that's very uh, dramatic. Uh, if we want to start a new paragraph, once again from the white space in the previous lecture, we know I just hit return. And let's play around with some other punctuation. Let's play with commas. Here we have a sentence. The first, second, and third options are good. Now when you have a list such as this, you separate the items in the list by a comma, except you drop the last comma, the one before the and, because that's the Oxford comma. Remember, and we're not using Oxford commas. We're updating. To tell you the truth, in the past, I always used Ox Oxford commas, and I think Strunk and White still says you should. But the modern Chicago style book and so on say that you should drop the Oxford comma, so I'm working hard to do that. So the first, second, and third options are good. And then we have yet another comma, breaking a sentence that is connected by but. Now this is very common to connect sentences by but, and, and then, things like that. And you usually precede them with a comma. I'd like to see what other options exist and we terminate the sentence with a period. So that's an example of using commas in a sentence. Now when it comes to style, I wanna show you a parenthetical aside, the two different ways, the way that I do it and the way that my wife does it using an M dash. Here's a parenthetical aside where we have Roger was good for a man. Notice that little lowering of the voice there, right? For a man, but Nancy was better. This is a parenthetical aside. So we're gonna comment on the fact that Roger is, was good in the middle of this sentence and then continue on with the sentence. Notice that you can take away the parenthetical aside in most cases, in fact, in every case, I think, and it still is a valid sentence. Roger was good, but Nancy was better, is what the sentence would be without the parenthetical aside. But we can put this in here to add a little emphasis or a little more information to the sentence. Now let's see what a parenthetical aside looks like with M dashes. And here it is. I had a feeling, not always a good thing, that we were in trouble. Now, the M dash, I got this just by typing two hyphens after one after another. Word automatically knows sometimes to expand that to an M dash. Sometimes you got to go back and replace all your hyphen hyphens with M dashes because Word forgets kind of periodically to expand them. So let me show that to you. Now, did you see the way that these two hyphens collapsed into a long or an M dash? This happens automatically in a word. So if you're using M dashes, then that's the way to do it. Now let's work a little bit with dialogue. Although later we're gonna have a more extensive session with dialogue, I wanna do a little bit with quoting with you. Okay, this is dialogue. And it is dialogue be because it's enclosed in double quotes. Now notice these are smart quotes. So it's changing, word is changing the beginning and ending quote to be different kinds of quotes to kind of wrap and show you where the beginning and the end of the thing is. Now, I can also identify who's speaking. 
You're a fool, Mark retorted. And notice how in this case, rather than ending the sentence with a period, we end it with a comma and continue on after the right double quote with Mark retorted. Now, if Mark has more to say, we can continue it on this paragraph by starting a new sentence. Here, we wouldn't have to say that Mark said it because we already know that. And since it's on the same paragraph line, we know this is more that Mark has to say. But I think you already know that, right? Mark concludes. So this is the way that you write dialogue. If you want to associate somebody with saying it, then you put the comma in there at the end. And if you don't, then you put the period there at the end to terminate a sentence. The next thing that I want to show to you is the little trick for combining sentences is using semicolon and a connecting word. So here we go. Here we go. Mark had one glaring flaw, namely that he could see no good in others. Now we could split this into two separate sentences. Let me do that now. There we go. Mark had one glaring flaw. Namely, that he could see no good in others. This would be another writing style. It would be a harder break. And the fact that these two sentences are kind of related to the same thing, I would want to pull them together. So the way that I would pull them together is to replace that period and the new sentence with a semicolon. Like that. Now, you could, of course, get rid of namely, um, but I kind of like having these connecting words. This is a little more terse. Mark had one glaring flaw, that he could see no good in others. So this is another way to connect things. And actually, you know, you could take a softer break here and do a comma in this place. And I think it would still, it's still grammatically correct. And it could be your style to not use semicolons, to not use hard pauses. You're defining your style here in picking up certain punctuation styles and leaving others behind. And for now, I think that's all that I want to give you for punctuation. Stick with the period question mark, exclamation mark. And to tell you the truth, as I said before, I use exclamation marks in dialogue and not really in my prose or in my writing. Use commas for introductions to the sentences, to separate lists and in dialogue, and for parenthetical asides, where my wife uses the M dash instead. That's another option if you want to pull that into your style. And then remember to terminate a sentence with a period or with a comma if you want to say in dialogue who it is that's speaking. Okay. And then you can use the semicolon for combining sentences. That's about it. That's about what I do as far as punctuation. I know it should be a lot more complicated than that. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but punctuation is simple. I'll see you in the next lecture where we'll begin looking at sentences.